You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast, fortunate enough to be joined now by Coach Jed Fish, coming from the coolest office in all of Tucson. Hello, Coach. How we doing, Matt? Good to not, see not, you. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, first, I just want to ask you, when you took over the program a couple years ago now, and where you are now, where are you, you know, with what your goals were, where they're aligned, and going into year three? Uh... At the beginning, I think at the beginning stages of where we want to be, um, I, I took over this program where I got this job and my expectation was to go win a championship. Like, right. I don't I don't think any other way. Uh, I never thought any other way. I feel like Arizona has every, everything you could ever want. Um, we're not there yet. We, uh, we have to get to a bowl game first. We have to um, win all of our home games. We have to find ways to sell out our stadium all the things that I've dreamt of uh, when I was, you know, hoping to one day be a head coach was to have the greatest atmosphere to win games and to bring back the days of when I was at Florida in the nineties, where it was, the expectation was a win. The expectation was a sellout and um, both usually happened. And that's been my goal to one day be able to get there. One thing that you were really able to do this past year was the upgrade at, you know, at the ta- at the skill positions on offense was very notable. I mean, you could make the case that you had as good a wide receiving core as there was in the country. This past year or this past offseason, then you work on the lot you're working on the defense and you got a whole new linebacking core right there that's got a lot of people excited. Tell people a little bit about what we can expect from that linebacker position now. Yeah, I, I would expect us to have um when it's all said and done. Uh, 30 new scholarship players, 32 new scholarship players on next year's team, and an additional 15 new walk-ons. Put us at about 47 new players. Last year, we were at 51 new players. Um, This year's group, probably 65 to 70% of them are defensive players. And um, we were able to really bring in uh, what I would consider – some uh, really good depth and also some really good starters uh, up front. Our front seven is what we committed to. We brought in four new defensive linemen. Um, We brought in uh, just a transfer portal and then another four, I believe it is, um, uh, that are freshmen. Then we brought linebacking core. We brought two in from the portal, uh, one from University of Washington, one from Oregon. Uh, obviously, Justin Flo is a very uh, well-known name and commodity. Um, and Daniel, then we bring in Daniel as well. And then we get Sua to commit to us on national TV um, at the Polynesian Bowl. Uh, we have Jacob Manu, who I believe is one of the better li- young linebackers in all of the Pac-12. Um, so I'm excited, really excited about our defense. I think we're going to see such great improvement defensively. When you think back to the last, you know, last few games, took the ball away five times against the team up north, um, took the ball away three or four times against Wazoo, uh, held UCLA to 28 points, took the ball away three times against Utah. Our defense was trending in the right direction and playing good football those last four games of the year. And we were playing a lot of young players. So those freshmen plus the new group plus the portal, transfers uh I, i'm really excited to see what our team looks like come march 13th one thing that you guys have really done a good job is finding the under the radar talent everybody knows about the t-max and whatnot but you look at you know big jonah Savanea, you look at wendell mo you look on the d-line uh uyagalele kungaika these were guys i mean Takario davis on the back end these were guys that were not highly rated but they came in and they were instant contributors and what did you What is your staff, how are they able to evaluate and find these guys? Because Greg, we had Greg Biggins on yesterday, and he said that it's a real gift that your staff and you have. Well, I think what it comes down to is you got to put in the time and you got to put in the effort to really dig deep and see who you're bringing in. And you have to be able to um, project. You have to be able to project what's this player going to look like in the future. We're in a developmental program. Uh, We're not going for... Um, 10 high school kids and 20 transfers. We're not going for the, all the ready-made guys. 
You know, my mind is not that. My mind is what can this guy do for us? What can we do to make sure that this player helps us? We've got a great scouting department. Our director of player personnel, Matt Doherty, does a phenomenal job. Um, we have Mike Lombardi as a consultant of ours. Mike Lombardi is one of the top personnel guys in the country, NFL and college. Um, we use all of our resources. Uh, I have Teddy Bruschi look at players. And I think the more people you could have get eyes on players, the more work you do. Um, our coach has done a great job to make sure it works. You said it at the presser uh, last year. You said that you had never been around a guy like Big Jonas Savinea at that age that carries the weight he did does. At this stage, you know, a year a year in, how would you uh, how would you rate where Jonas at and what your expectations are for him going forward? Well, he was a freshman All American. Right, he started every game. Um, I don't think you could ever ask for anything more than that of a true high school freshman coming in and becoming that guy. You know, that's pretty amazing. Uh, I would expect him to compete to be an All-American, an AP All-American uh, in the years to come, not just freshman All-American. I think he's going to be an NFL first-round pick. Uh, I think he's that good. So we got to keep him healthy. We got to keep developing him. We got to keep letting him uh, learn and grow. But Big Jonah has every tool. Uh, there's the, We've had a lot of NFL coaches on our campus uh, for different times that they've spent with me over the two years. And they've all seen him practice and they all make the same comment. I don't know what a three-star player looks like, but I know what an NFL player looks like. And that's what an NFL player looks like. All right. Let's talk about your QB room because you got some nice depth there. Obviously Jaden Delora has a good year. You got Noah Fafita behind him, Braden Dorman, four-star kid coming in. What do you think about your QB room going into next year? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a great room. It's gonna be a great room. Uh, Jaden is um, doing a great job into developing uh, into the type of QB one that everybody looks for. Uh, his leadership off the field, he's improving upon that tremendously. Uh, his work ethic, he's getting bigger, he's getting stronger. He's committed to his speed. Uh, he's committed to learning uh, learning the game better and better. Um, He's got a ton of gifts. We can, you know, trade off a few interceptions for a few more touchdowns. We're looking at a 30 touchdown, six interception year. Um, he does some great things with his feet. Noah Fafita is um, special in every way uh, a kid can be. He's got unbelievable arm strength. He uh, is a great, great uh, thinker of the game, processor of the game. He's fully prepared and ready to go at any moment in time. Uh, I would say that we have, I would take our QB room or uh, against anyone in the country. You take those guys in the same room, one and two, pretty good. Um, and then I would say uh, Braden coming in and Cole Tannenbaum coming off of his first year. Cole is a walk-on for us. It's done a great job. Braden, um, you saw what he could do in the poly bowl. He made right. through two touchdown passes, made some unbelievable throws, big physical, tall presence, going to put some weight on him, get him stronger, get him developing. But uh, I love that group of four. All right, let's talk about Coach Scotty Graham. Uh, one of the one of the coolest coaches. you got a lot of cool coaches. He's right up there. No fumbles this past year. What makes Coach Graham such a good coach? Well, you know, Scotty Graham never fumbled the ball in his whole life. Right. I'm sure, I'll tell you that. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, seven years in the NFL, four years at Ohio State, four years in high school, never fumbled the ball. Um, that is, it's a mindset, it's a mentality. Uh, Scotty Graham is, I mean, he's special now. Uh, he's funny, he's intense, he's a great mentor and leader of men. The players follow him, the players love him, the players believe in him, the players think the world of him. Uh, you look at that running back room of Mike Wiley returning, which right. is a huge get. You know, that to me is a signing a five-star. Right. When you could get Mike Wiley and Jordan Morgan to come back, both guys that are NFL players and Jacob Cowling. You know, to me, you sign a five-star kid, right, in high school. The reason why they're a five-star is they project to be an NFL player. Right. If you can get three NFL players to return, that means you got three five-star players to return. Because once right. they get to the NFL, they're automatic five-stars. Right. So when Jordan Morgan, Mike Wiley, and – Jacob Cowling all decided to return. 
that made a monster difference in our recruiting class. Um, how is jo how is Jordan Morgan doing? Jordan's doing well. Jordan's doing well. He's ahead of the curve when it comes to uh, his treatment, his uh, his recovery. He's an incredible athlete, but he's you know a three hundred and twenty pound, three hundred thirty pound offensive lineman that's working his tail off right now. Or, uh, Coach, I've had so many people ask me about the NIL and how it pertains to the University of Arizona, Jed Fish, players. How are how is just kind of explain it out there for it, how it works for you guys. How many people do you think will be listening to this? Give me a number. Um, a couple thousand. Three, four, so if five, we get five. a couple thousand people and everyone gives a hundred bucks, then we could start right there with we could have what? A uh, hundred thousand dollars? Right. Something like that to get going into the collective, all 501c3. Mm -hmm. um, here's the way it works. NIL is real. It's not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, we all want it to go somewhere. It's not. NIL started off with the idea of being able to compensate kids for uh, a jersey, for uh, going to a restaurant, for getting a tattoo, for getting a haircut, and not putting a team on probation for it. Uh, nowadays, there's two different things. A, they're great marketers, and then B, there's also collectives where they're receiving money through a collective th for nonprofit. What our kids do is this. Our kids, in order for our kids to get any money, what they've got to do is they've got to participate in 12 community service events a year. Um, they've got to make sure that um, they're able to fulfill their contract every single month they, uh, with, with the collective. They're also able to, if anyone in the community wants to hire them to be a speaker for their plumbing company or their law firm or their doctor's offices or their dentist or their, you know, insurance group, they're now able to do that. Uh, some of the money is crazy that people are right. giving. We, we're not in that world, but we try to be equitable. We try to be fair and we make sure that all of our kids are happy. All right, coach. Can't thank you enough for hopping on here. Can we get a bear down and a back the A from you? Bear down, back the A. Coach Fish, you're the man. Appreciate you. And like I told you offline, you've made my job so much easier just with your energy, your recruiting, and what you got going here. So, again, keep it up. And, uh, again, congratulations on winning the offseason and another awesome year. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks again. That's Coach Fish right there. Um, and, again, First of all, a lot of cool things about Coach Fish that we're going to get to right there. Back the A right there, baby. Very cool. A couple things, though. Got to pay, pay the bills first. Four Peaks, the official brew of PHNX Sports. Here's the deal. Go down or downtown Tempe. You can go down there and root against the ASU crew crew they're great people don't root against them but you can root against asu or you can come and get your four peaks at the tap and bottle watch parties fun stuff check it out uh 21 and up check out the show notes and the link in the description and more furniture you might look at me and say mike luke's not very tall but then you could also look at Jacob Franklin or Shane Diefenbach and say they are tall. Guess what? More Furniture has the exact same furniture for us that is uh, you can mold into everything you need. It's uh, it's very uh, cost effective. It's good. Check it out. More Furniture, M-O-R Furniture.com. All right. I've been saying this forever, but I'm going to keep saying it. Jed Fish gets it. And what I mean is this is that there are simple things that some coaches just don't get, and we've seen previous coaches here not get it. And I'll use a perfect example right here of South Point High School. Everybody knows B. John Robinson, Lathan Ransom, um, big-time players have come out of there. Jed Fish has obviously he's been on the <laughs> he's been recruiting the South Point kids, but you you bring in a kid like a Cruz Rushing. Now, Cruz Rushing can play. He's got the ability to be able to be a defensive back that can play here. And at the end of the day, maybe he turns into something or he's just a special teams player. But either way, great kid, great teammate. His brother's also Elijah Rushing, who's a five-star kid um, at South Point. These are easy things. You get a kid from Cru in Cruz Rushing that could possibly be a contributor which doesn't hurt with bringing in his brother as well, possibly, possibly. I didn't guarantee anything right there. But those are the kind of things that you find. And he's got a staff full of recruiters who are as good as you'll find. We had Greg Biggins on the other day, or we had Greg Biggins on, and he talked about how the energy, the talent, 
the level of uh, expertise they have is something that he hasn't seen at the U of A. And that's what you'd love to see if you're a University of Arizona fan, because quite frankly, we haven't seen that before. And then you look at it and compartmentalize basically everything that you've got going down the list right here. You've got a quarterback room right now, and I, be I believe Coach Fish when he said he wouldn't trade it for anybody. You got Jaden Delora. We've all seen what he can do. Noah Fafita is going to be a big – or he's going to be a big-time player here. You watch him. I don't care about his size. The ball fall, the ball just snaps out of his hand, and he makes great decisions. Braden Dorman was his big-time Polynesian Bowl right there, um, multiple touchdown passes. You can tell that he's got a lot going for him. And then you sprinkle it around. you got a loaded running backs room with the best running backs coach in the country, our guy, Coach Scotty Graham, who's also part of the back the A movement. Very, uh, very important right there. And at the wide receiver position, you've got T-Mac. You've got Jacob Cowan. You've got Kevin Green. You've got Mario Wilson coming in. You could maybe be getting another player, wink, wink, from a, uh, um, a prominent school. You've got a lot of talent there. And then on the lines, that's where I think it gets fascinating. And we're going to get to that in just a second here. But first, tap and bottle. You need to come to the tap and bottle watch parties right now. Tap and bottle watch parties downtown at uh, um, great time. Next one is February 11th. Um, you got uh, people on here commenting. Kobe Thiel. You've got uh, uh, Anthony Humbert. You got me, Matthew Bothwell. You name it, you got it. William Brad Alice comes down there many times, as does uh, you know some other. Uh, Matt Mulebach's been down there. Love to see all of you. Tap and bottle. Great stuff. February 11th, the next watch party. And illegal peats. If you've been in Tucson or Tempe and you're under the age of 35, you know about illegal peats. I know about illegal peats. Shane Diefenbach behind the scenes um, <laughs> loves about illegal peats. Tempe, Tucson, you name it, they got it. High energy, great food, great price, or uh, you know, cheap, uh, cheap drinks. And it's just overall, it's just a very, very good time. Illegal peats. Again, for all of this, check out the show notes and the link in the description. All right. The thing, though, about Arizona football that I think we really need to talk about, though, is depth on the lines, because that's something that generally only the really, really good programs have. And I think what uh, Coach Fish has been able to do and what's made it unique is he's getting players from a little bit of a different, uh, maybe a little bit different of a background. And uh, Ricky Garrett right here, my guy, Arizona football going to climb like the ladder. That <laughs> very cool. Um but just look at the D line or look at the O line like we talked about. You get Wendell Moe, a kid out of Long Beach Poly, really under recruited, comes in, probably not coming out of the lineup. Big Jonas Savanea, to quote Jed Fish, what a first round pick looks like right there. And look on the D line as well. Under the radar guys, we talked about it. You got Tai Tai Uyagalele. You've got Jacob Kangaika. Under the radar guys that are going to fill out and are going to be real problems right there. So again, and this is something that Dick Tomey did very well was mining the uh, community, the Polynesian uh, uh, community, people of Polynesian descent, big strong guys that uh, sometimes can get a little bit overlooked in the recruiting scene. And that's again, that's the uh, uh, that's a little bit of the template that Jed Fish has been able to use, and he's used it quite successfully right there. So again, keep watching that. You got other guys coming in. You got a Raymond Polito at the offensive tackle position. You've got Jordan Morgan coming back. Again, there's a lot to look forward to. I was talking with uh, I was talking with my producer Shane off the uh, off, uh, and he said, and keep in mind, Shane's an ASU fan, and he said that he could see Arizona possibly winning eight games. Now, I'm not going to say that Shane is part of the back the A movement, but I'm not saying that he's not part of it either. But again, I'm just kidding; he's not part of the movement, but he is uh, enjoying from afar. I'll put it to you like that. Um, but there's just a lot to really like right now about the direction of this program. And it all stems from the energy. Like I said, when you've got a guy that wants to be here, when you've got a guy who is putting in the time, that's what you need. And quite frankly, if, uh, you know, if, um, he wasn't putting in the time, we would know it by now. We saw it with someone. Heck, I mean, we saw it with Rich Rod when, you know, guys that he didn't inherit, started to wash out of the program, you're like, all of a sudden, hmm, there's not a lot of talent right here. Jed Fish gets it, and only, not only that, he's going to start, he's going to be bringing in more talent because people want to play for him. Also, something got to tell you about. The DraftKings Sportsbook app. 
code word PHNX. Now, you might say, Mike, what's that all about? Glad you asked. Here's the deal. You put down five bucks and you can get up to you can get up to $200 in free plays. That's simple, that easy. NBA games, you got the NFL here as well. Again, check out the show notes and the link in the description. 21 and up, Arizona only. Now, if we were in college football season, I would tell you, or no, we're in college basketball season right now. You say, Mike, who would you uh, uh, bet against? I would bet against ASU. They're in free fall. They're falling apart. Meanwhile, maybe get a parlay in there where you bet against ASU and you back the A to get the, uh, um, maybe get a nice little payout there. But again, 21 and up, Arizona only. Check out the show notes and the link in the description. Everybody out there, this was absolutely fantastic. I am on cloud nine. I can't thank you all enough. Um, like I said, this is absolutely great. We had hundred almost 150 lives last night at almost midnight for uh, Arizona-Washington State game. And that's because of all of you right there. Again, thank you a ton. And again, you're going to get to all your comments tomorrow. But again, Shane Diefenbach behind the scenes. Good dude. Um, thanks again. But we'll be back with you tomorrow. Post-game show for Arizona basketball. Big thanks to Jeff or Jed Fish and to Jeff Bo for making this one happen. We'll be back with you. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. Mm-hmm.